when I was four, I was diagnosed with kidney cancer of my right kidney, and they took it out, and the chemo and radiation gave me um, gave me cardiomyopathy, and cardiomyopathy led to congestive heart failure, and I needed a transplant when I was 13. It didn't really affect me too much when I was little. Um, I just kind of knew I. Uh, was slower at things and I would fall often and when uh, the kids at school, they, when Susie fell, it was you needed to, to go help her because, you know, um, Susie's muscles weren't as strong as the other kids, so it was just kind of like that. And then I had a stroke at 16 and then rejection at 19 and Syncardia at 19. She was too sick to wait for a heart, a second heart transplant. She would not have been able to wait for that organ. And so really the only options were either hospice or, um, and not pursuing anything else or a total artificial heart. I'm the first female in a pediatric hospital with this. I went to uh, have a heart cath procedure done in January. Um, the results were not so good. Um, my heart wasn't working very well. It was depressing, I was really sad. Just, you know, didn't want to do anything. Just kind of like giving up, I guess you could say. I did my research and um, found Cincinnati Children's. I followed the Parent Project uh, Muscular Dystrophy on Facebook and it had a link to Jason's story. Thanks to him I was here. Huh? Thanks, Sam, I was gonna be okay. We're now starting to explore new uh, patient populations who before uh, had little to no hope. And now we're discovering ways in which we can help those children. And I think uh, the number of children that we will now, really children and families who we now can give hope to, will continue to increase. We know patients that we follow in this clinic with dystrophin-based disease, whether Becker, Duchenne phenotypes, are all predisposed to heart muscle disease. So just as the skeletal muscle becomes disease in these patients, so does the heart muscle. And all patients with these forms of disease, if they're followed long enough, most likely develop what's called dilated cardiomyopathy. And with that can come symptoms of congestive heart failure. So we've tried to be aggressive in how we treat those patients, including medical therapies, pacemaking strategies, consideration of defibrillators, and uh, possible consideration for ventricular assist devices. So this currently offers the most complete care for patients with Duchenne for cardiovascular disease of anywhere in the country. When you look at the amount of mechanical devices used since 2010, which was really when the first one was placed here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, we have grown 110% and have implanted more than 16 devices in the past 10 months alone. Really our motto is that we can support any child of any size with the best device for their particular heart failure, which is quite unique. We fully evaluate them, and then we look for the perfect device for them. Sometimes that's easy because it's an approved device that's ready to go, but sometimes we have to go to the government, to the FDA, and ask special permission to use devices. Sometimes that can be a lot of work, but we know that this is the best thing for our patients so that they can go on to transplant or they can go on to living with their device at home. Once the team gets that referral, that usually comes with a uh, CT or an MRI scan. Using that information, we have uh, new technology, new software that allows us to virtually recreate the surgery. And that's important because, especially in the pediatric population, children come in different body types, body sizes, body shapes. With this software and the data that we've obtained from the MRI and the CT, we can virtually place a total artificial heart within their chest cavity and determine whether or not it's going to fit appropriately. Most children's hospitals do not have the ability to care for adults. Um, we have taken it a step farther and we have an adult care team that includes internal medicine physicians as well as adult congenital physicians who can care for these patients, which allows us to care for all ages. You have your patient educated first and then we'll focus on their care provider. For a child that's a parent, for an adult that might be their spouse, or a loved one that's going to be around them, we then look out to the community around them. Who and, and where are they on a daily basis? So do they go to work? Does their workplace know about the device? 
who would they call in case of an emergency? So at the EMT department, the fire department, where would they go? So you look at the emergency rooms all around them. We may need to train teachers. We need to train care providers that will be with them. That is our whole goal with all this education is that the, these patients can go back into their community and have a very high quality of life but still be safe with their device. Without Dr. Morales, God love him and this team, I wouldn't be here right now having this conversation with you. I feel like God is the best in my whole life. <laughs>